All right, welcome back to another review. It's been quite some time since my last upload, so thanks for sticking around. I've had a lot of things to do. I've had a lot on my to-do list, and I've been just taking care of a lot of things. But finally, we are at a point where I can start a little bit of my review process once again. So I do have some other projects in the works for you all, but when I heard that Sennheiser was revising their HD 660S, which, if you recall, I didn't like. I had to jump on the opportunity, like, right now. And as you can see in my post from a few weeks ago, Sennheiser themselves have absolutely nothing to do with this review. This was bought and paid for with my money, and so my thoughts are completely my own. I also avoided every single review out there so that my thoughts going into these are as pure as can be. Purely my thoughts, uninfluenced. So, let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. Now, right off the bat, we're going to start with the content. So they're, they're real simple here. Plain cardboard box with the headphones on it. Pretty nice box, definitely, but nothing special. Now, attached to the headphones, you'll see the dual two-pin to fourth-inch cable that's about as long as my wingspan. Honestly, it's not the worst Sennheiser cable I've ever seen. It's pretty nice, and it's got a nice, you know, branding to it, but yeah, nothing special either. It definitely doesn't fade away like the OG HD 600's cable does. I'm still very much aware that it's still there, so yeah, I'd probably replace it if you happen to have extra cash lying around. Now you'll also see a really beefy 4th inch to 3.5 millimeter adapter with the... Actually, I lied, no Sennheiser branding. A soft carrying pouch for your headphones. and Yeah, they, they just about fit in here, so not a big deal whatsoever. A quality certificate, as you can see. These pass the test. Fantastic. And of course, the quick start guide for those of us whose first headphone happens to be a $600 Sennheiser product. Sure. So let's talk about the build quality now. I'll preface my opinion here with the fact that I've never seen or felt the new HD 600 or HD 650, so I have no reference to what the cheaper, updated versions of this line are feel like. So when I think of high quality plastic, right? This, this is it right here. It can be made of more robust materials, but I, I really don't think that's necessary at all. This happens to be a good midpoint for this caliber of headphone, especially since it keeps the weight down. It's got those newer flat edges, as you can see there, compared to the OG's rounder edges. Not sure if you can see it well enough on camera, for comparison's sake. The only metal here is going to be in the bridges between the headband and the cups and on the grills of the headphones as well. Either way, I don't, I really don't see durability being a problem here unless you were to like really put a lot of stress up on the middle of the headband in like a quick like uh, rapid motion, just like uh. See that would make me a bit nervous if you're doing that when they're brand new like very, very, very aggressively. But as we've seen from the OG HD 600 line, that won't really be a problem. People do it all the time to loosen the clamp force, and it's just fine. Let's go ahead and talk about the comfort. As for comfort, we all know the HD 600 line is real clampy right out of the box. So do expect that with this new design too. Luckily, these can handle a bit of extra tension. Again, flex these in these three areas a little bit at a time every now and then. This should make the break-in period a little easier on your head. These are every bit as comfortable as all the others in the lineup, I'd say. Now, I've never been one to complain about the Sennheiser pads. I think they're absolutely fair. You know, they're not the most comfortable pad I've ever felt, but they're really not as uncomfortable as people say. You know, they're stiff at first, but they do break in and get more plush over time. I mean, here's a bit of a comparison to the pads I've been using on the HD 600s for about uh, four years now. They're the exact same pad, by the way, except these are a lot more squished and squishy. Now let's go ahead and talk about amplification. So the S2s are back to a 300 ohm impedance to align with its older brother, such as the HD 600 right here. Therefore, it's exactly what you think. Running these off of my THX AAA 789 and my SMSL SU8, in single-ended I ran the HD 600 at 10 on gain 2, while I ran the S2 at around half a step higher around 10.30, also on gain 2. A little more on why that is later in the review. As for running these balanced, same story here. I ran the HD 600 at 10 on gain 1, while I ran the S2 at around 10.30, also on gain 1. 
I was going to mention a little earlier, sorry if you happen to catch like buzzing or static on my AT2035 microphone. I've been trying to fix that issue and I think it has something to do with my motherboard grounding issues and it, it sucks but there's nothing I could do about it unless you want me to wait like another week to release this video, uh, which believe me, I've been working on, so I don't want to delay any longer, I'm sorry. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the sound. So before we begin, once again I'll remind you that I do not use EQ or any coloration for this comparison up until we get to the notes and observations portion of this review. Let's begin with some bass. So we'll start off by saying, at long last we have some sub bass in here. I, I'm not going to say these push out stupid levels of sub bass performance, nor volume, but now you can actually hear and feel something down there. It's I couldn't believe my ears. A prime example here, I pulled out Mask Off by Future and then I was shocked to hear that I could hear the lowest bass notes clearly and feel them too. Not just that, the area of the bass right above that, where the higher bass notes lie, isn't puffed up and bloated to compensate. All those notes were well in line with each other. I I'm shocked to be hearing something like this coming out of an HT600 line headphone. Like, truly, I am. And yeah, in case you're wondering, it's immediately obvious. Switching over to the HD 600, it just it, it puts these to shame. The 600 just lacks so much presence, and while it's become part of its charm and associated with the cleanliness and the while it's become part of the whole easy listening part of this headphone, that excuse really just doesn't fly so well anymore. When you've got one of its direct brothers being more capable than them. Now, granted, I'm just talking about sub bass here, not mid bass or upper bass. Now let's talk about mid bass. The S2 simply have a wee bit more presence, but have so much more detail to it. I mean, so much. To test these out, I brought out Kyoto by Skrillex and Syrah. Put on the S2 and you say something like, well, yeah, you know, this seems like your average amount of warmth and meatiness for the track, nothing outrageous. You compliment its detail too. You're like, yeah, this is, this is pretty good detail. I really like this. Okay, cool. It doesn't blow you away in any way, shape, or form. It just makes you feel like what you're hearing is, you know, proper. It's like, yeah, this this aligns with what I expected. Then you put on the HD 600s and everything is um, just so anemic. Just, it's not there. I can understand that these were meant to be lighter on the bass from the beginning. Bass was meant to be, like, in the background, take a, you know, take a seat compared to the mids and the treble, but... Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. You can immediately tell that these drivers are simply less capable of detail retrieval when it comes to the bass texture and quality. And for the record, I also tried out tracks like uh, The Island, The Skrillex Remix, Dawn by Pendulum, and of course, Zealots of Stockholm by Childish Gambino. Same feeling. Same, same feeling. Bass guitars. Don't I don't know why I said it like that, but bass guitars. There's a bit more presence to them in the S2, but it's more of an improvement in quality rather than anything. I'm honestly going to attribute this to the drivers being a, a more modern design, you know, but yeah, those bass guitars do experience a notable improvement in texture and overall fullness. So in summary, if you're one of those who thought the bass quantity and quality in the original HD 600 were just way too light and anemic for you know, your music standards. Here they are, man. The 660S2 bring the HD600 line up to what would be considered up to code with today's standards. And it's it's totally a welcome improvement. But they are by no means the king of bass either. Just want to highlight that. Now I want to talk about the mid section. I'll start off by saying that the mids on the S2 are, they're very clear and articulate. Definitely. I'm very much satisfied with what I hear. Again, these now give you what the HD 600 should sound like in this day and age. However, here's the caveat, uh, depending on how you see it. The mids are no longer the center of attention like they once were with the HD 600 line. Now, I tested using various tracks such as Dream On, the postmodern jukebox cover, to carry on by Avenged Sevenfold. So starting with Dream On, the vocals in this track are mixed to always pop out. So unsurprisingly, they popped in both the S2 and the HD 600. You can tell that they pop out in the HD 600 just a wee bit more though. The cello, yeah, beautiful tambour, both of these, just beautiful. 
but you can immediately tell that the S2 take it a step further in terms of texture and detail. It really is a true modernization of the HD600 line. Now, in Carry On, the difference is far more stark. I really can't complain with the mid-presence in the S2, but they, once again, are not the undeniable star of the show like they once were. Put on the HD600s, and sure enough, the mids remain where they are, while the low and high regions take a little step back. Here's a fan favorite, Easy Lover by Philip Bailey and Phil Collins. I heard this difference in spades within the vocals. While it is still easy to isolate the vocals from the rest of the track, the HD600 are still more capable of doing so, because it's as if you're peeling back the bass and treble to isolate the mids. So the winner in this category is a bit subjective. In terms of presence, the HD600 are the clear winners if what you seek is that broad separation between the mid-range and the lows and highs. But make no mistake, the S2s are very much the better performers in terms of detail and technicality. Now let's go ahead and talk about the treble here. Treble is just about what you would expect from the upper end of the HD600 line. It's not forward or sharp at all, it leans a bit towards the easy listening side of things, while the high end won't get too aggressive. I will say though, while the S2 are slightly more forward than the HD600, the HD600 do have a slightly more silvery timbre to them. Once again, the S2 are clearly just a step up in terms of technical performance compared to the HD600. The, the latter really just starting to show their age. While the 600 sound a bit more silvery in timbre, there's just more definition to the S2. It's just that plain and simple. As far as sibilance goes, neither of these get sibilant to my ears. The S2 might be a wee bit more sibilant as a trade-off for that extra clarity, but it's, it's, it's really minimal. I, I really wouldn't make my choice based on this one aspect alone. I wouldn't let this be the tipping point that pushes you towards one versus the other. But there is a bit of a catch with the S2s, unfortunately. This is, in my opinion, the most deterring part of the headphone. It's the, you know, Achilles heel of the headphone, if it has one anyway. There is a bit of a hump around 2 to 4K that makes the upper mids lower treble just a, just a bit too lively and energetic for my tastes. In certain tracks like Begin Again by Knife Party, you can definitely feel this overabundance of energy and hypeness, and it can, it can get a bit fatiguing over time. It really can. In general, this tends to occur in certain female vocals that involve shouting. So think of Cruella's music, right? You're mostly going to experience it with these types of tracks. And this is one of the reasons why the HD600 have remained the kings of neutrality for over two decades. They're, they're the masters of none. They're plain and simple, they're the masters of none. But there's no real flaw to them that kills the experience either. Unless you're one of those sub-bass hype lords. Oh, where's my sub-bass? I'm listening to hip-hop. Not that I have anything against hip-hop. I love me some new Jabez. I love me some... MF Doom, New Jabez, and MF Doom. I mean, come on, man, MF Doom. Where's Mr. Fantastic? Where is he? We gotta find Mr. Fantastic, bruv. Come on. Now let's talk about the sound stage and imaging performance here. So these are still from the HD 600 line. They're definitely on the mid to narrow side of things. I personally don't mind this at all. To me, it's more about how they use the space granted to them that matters. That said, they are a tad wider than the HD 600s, just by a bit. Here's the way I perceive it, right? If you take your palms and you try to encapsulate what you hear, this is probably how wide the HD 600s sound to me. I'll come over here. Probably this wide. This is how far the sound reaches. Now for the S2, you're basically dealing with the same level of sound stage with, but there's a tiny gap between you and the sound, like basically right here. Now this gap is only like maybe two centimeters of difference tops, but it effectively gives the S2 that extra little space to sound ever so slightly wider. I will say it's not too much, so don't worry about them sounding like too far away. Just, it is a notable difference. Imaging. I've always found the HD600 line to be mildly adequate. 
when it comes to imaging. They get the job done and I can't complain about what I hear, but it doesn't really blow me away like the HD 800 line does. Now the S2s in this case are no exception. I doubt anyone would be disappointed by what they hear, but unless this is their first high-end audiophile headphone, I doubt they'll be taken aback either. When it comes to the detail though, that's a totally different story. As I've mentioned before, the S2s are the modernization of the HD600 line. The difference isn't so much like lifting a veil, you know, that, that accursed Sennheiser veil, quote unquote. It's more like visiting the ophthalmologist and updating your glasses prescription. Everything is just sharper, it's just more detailed. Now, let's go over some notes and observations. Here, I'd like to talk about the slight elevation in those upper mids and lower highs. As I've continued the review process, I've mostly grown used to it, much like people would get used to that 6K peak in the HD 800 and 800S line. You learn to look past it, but it doesn't completely go away either. Granted, this case isn't as severe as the HD 800 line's peak, but nah, I digress. Anyway, here's my thoughts on EQing. I'd rather not EQ a headphone unless absolutely necessary. And I must say, the only thing I'd like to fix, if I can, is that singular peak. Thankfully, it's really not that severe, so a simple two decibel drop does the trick for me. Though, if you ask me, if I didn't have that EQ option, it really wouldn't be the worst thing in the world either. Now, if we're already using EQ, I also went ahead and brought the mids forward just a peak in case you really wanted to recapture a little bit of that mid-centric HD 600 magic, you know. Last of all, this extra hump in the bass region is entirely optional. These headphones do bass very well already. I personally would only use it for some EDM or something hard-hitting like maybe hip-hop or rap where that sub-bass is just, mmm, just so nice. Anything else that just doesn't need it, like say rock, metal, acoustic music, orchestral, maybe some jazz, I really just don't. Don't even turn it on. It, this is more than enough, trust me. In some cases, I would even lower the warmth in just a weensy bit. Conclusion. So if you've been paying attention, you may have noticed the details here. Extra bass presence. Less present mids. Slightly more present treble. What's that mean? Well, if you're someone who believes that HD 600 are absolute neutral, in other words, if you're someone who believes the ratio of bass mids to highs on these headphones are the definition of flat, then by contrast, the HD 660 S2s are what you may consider slightly V-shaped. I personally don't see it that way. I do believe the HD 600s are more on the mid-centric side of things. They're like a slight deviation from neutral. This is neutral. This is kind of like the HD 600s right here. This is exactly how I feel about the S2 being slightly V-shaped. It's just, it's ever so slight. Now, I'll be upfront with you, I came into this hoping these would be the evolution of the HD 600, which I have mained for all this time, but expecting disappointment all at once. Well, I was pleasantly surprised. These things are no HD 800s, that's for sure. It's not, abandon your HD 600s, forget all about them, because these will be a direct replacement. No, that's not the case here. But holy Fuck, are they an interesting pair. At this point, I really didn't expect this level of bass performance out of an HD 600 line headphone. I'm very surprised to hear the stark difference in technical performance between the two models. I'd love to hear what an updated 600 might sound like. As in, you know, improve its technical performance to, to modern day standards and just maybe increase sub bass presence and nothing else. Everything else is just fine the way it is. We're fine, right? I would love to listen to something like that. And from what I understand, the newer HD 600 model doesn't sound that much better than these. So very disappointed on that end, but you know, who knows? I'll try them out someday in the future. So would I buy the HD 660 S2s? Yeah, I, I think I definitely would. I think these are a cop. Now, if you absolutely love the HD 600 line and we're waiting for the next level of performance, yeah, these are, these are it, man. However, as I said before, they're not a direct upgrade. It is a different sound signature. Enough to justify keeping the cheap HD 600s as your mid-centric pair and keep the S2s as the fun one. But that's going to be my take on these. Stay tuned for upcoming comparisons to the Hi-Fi Men Sundara, uh, the Focal LX, 
and I still have the Sipka SV23s, so why not? I'll compare it to those two, maybe even the HT800, we'll see. Let me know in the comment section if that is something you would like to see as well. Uh, thank you very much for watching this review, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Okay, ciao.